What's good, Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. Today we are talking Raiders versus Seahawks. And I want to talk about some of the different things I saw on tape. Uh, I've watched both the offense and defensive, all 22 tape, and there's so much to take away from this game. I really think this. For the first time, the Raiders really came together as a team. As a football club, the D-line dominated. The O-line crushed the Seahawks. The game plan, the adjustments, everything just looked really good for the Raiders. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to talk about Derek Carr. We'll talk about the offense a little bit, and then we'll switch over to the defensive side. Uh, first and foremost, Derek Carr had a pretty good game. Uh, he had a couple of throws where I'm sure he would love to take back. Uh, two interceptions by Derek Carr. And um, initially, when I did my post game after the Seahawks Raiders game, uh, at that moment, I understand I don't have the all 22 tape. Um, and I put the first interception on Derek Carr, and that was wrong, right? After watching the tape, it was very clear. Uh, although the ball did go high, it went high because Derek Carr was pressured, right? Derek Carr was forced to throw the football a little early. And because of that, the pass was intercepted. Um, Andrew James, keep in mind, the first play of the game, got his ass kicked, right? Um, Andre James, and, and I'll be the first to tell you guys, has gotten what much better, right, from his first ever game that he started for the Raiders like officially last year to where he's at today is much better. But he still struggles with one big thing and that was that is power. Powerful nose tackles, powerful one technique defensive lineman. He still struggles with it. Um, he lost on the game's first rep. I didn't see any other losing reps after this one, but on the first play of the game, he lost and Derek Carr kind of threw it, threw it early and we threw an interception. Now, um, you can put the blame of that first interception on Andre James as much as you do on Derek Carr for throwing the pass, right? Um, because at the end of the day, he is the quarterback. But um, I do want to reel it back in, right? I don't think the two interceptions were necessarily 100% on Derek Carr. I think the Raiders did a really good job making an, a key adjustment specifically. Uh, you know, one of the things that teams in the past have done is they've stacked the box. They said that we're going to stop Josh Jacobs and we're going to let you throw the football. And the Seahawks took the opposite approach. They played two safeties deep 90% of the time. Obviously, they played a little bit of cover three or a cover one um, where they put that extra safety in the box. But for the most part, the Seahawks used what is referred to as a light box. They kept two safeties deep and they told the Raiders to run the football. They told the Raiders that if you guys want to run the football, go for it. But we're going to take away Devontae Adams. We're going to take away the deep passes. Um, and we're not going to let you hit us with those play actions right over the middle of the field type of throws that we were able to have success with over the past couple of weeks. And Derek Carr actually got in trouble with that concept early on, specifically the second interception. And let's just break it down a little bit. So here's that second interception. You're going to see that Derek Carr is going to play action and he's going to try to fit the ball to Foster Moreau. And it's just a great play by 57. Uh, here's the thing with this play. Uh, some people said Derek Carr may have misread this play, and that is possible uh, based off of what the defense is showing you right now. You would assume it's some sort of cover two or some sort of cover four or some sort of cover six, which means you don't expect either of these linebackers to carry deep. Uh, generally speaking, if you're going to play action, most linebackers are going to get sucked in, but 57 does not get sucked in, nor does 56. Uh, they really don't care about the run, and it showed because the Raiders continuously ran the football, and we averaged 6.9 yards running the football. But this right here is what the Seahawks wanted to do, right? They wanted to play that light box. And I think that's why the Raiders ended up throwing two interceptions early, because they didn't fall for the play actions. Now, you can say maybe this is on Derek for taking that shot when the guy was clearly covered, but I think this is also just a really nice play by 57. 57 legitly just reads Foster Moreau's body. He reads those hands and he puts his hand up right where the hand of Foster Moreau is and the ball gets popped out and it gets intercepted. The Seahawks played a, a light box and I think early on Derek threw some interceptions because of that, right? The Seahawks did not care to stop the run. The Seahawks invited the Raiders to run the football and ultimately that cost him the game, right? That was their game plan coming in. And of course, early on, you threw two interceptions because of that. And I think the Raiders... Uh, Josh McDaniels, Derek Carr, I think they quickly realized it, that this team is playing a light box and they realized that that's what we need to do in terms of attacking them. 
obviously we saw how that worked out right because josh jacobs just ran right over the seahawks uh, but that's kind of what the seahawks wanted to do that was obviously their game plan coming in and after Derek Carr's first two interceptions, remember the first three drives, two interceptions. After that, the Raiders were really stout on the offensive side. A lot of good long drives, a lot of points to end drives. Um, the O-line did well, the running back, the quarterback, the receivers all played within that scheme, right? Which was the Seahawks were going to let us run the football. So besides running the football, we had a lot of throws to the running backs. Amir Abdullah, Josh Jacobs. Sorry, Jacobs had like seven catches. Uh, Amir Abdullah had a couple catches. The tight ends were getting some catches, right? So we were definitely doing that, right? Um, I want to switch focus a little bit, right? Um, we're not going to get into Josh Jacobs or the offensive line in a general uh, viewpoint because I actually did an entire film breakdown of the O-line and Josh Jacobs yesterday. If you guys did not watch that, go back and watch that video, man. A lot of really, really good pieces within that video. Um, but I do want to talk about one guy on the offense line specifically, and it's a guy that is constantly disrespected. Uh, for me personally, right, I, when I look at the Raiders offensive line, we don't have Jason Kelsey, right? We don't have Creed Humphrey. We don't have Corey Lindsley. We don't have a top offensive lineman that we can say this guy is our number one offensive lineman we had that last year that was colton miller but this year that's no longer colton miller because miller isn't just 100 percent better than all the other guys this is no longer true and that's okay right but with with saying that right that we don't have one clear-cut best offensive lineman i look at this raiders offensive line and i say there's a different guy that i think could be potentially the best guy in a given different week well I think over the course of the last multiple weeks, right? I think the Raiders' best offense lineman has been Jermaine Illuminor. And I think it's time that we start giving him that credit. Um, I get people talk about his penalties and they say he has too many penalties, right? He averages one penalty a game. It's, it's too many, right? He needs to cut those penalties out. But Jermaine Illuminor has consistently been very stout in pass pro. The guy has shut down some of the top tier edge rushers, and he just did it against Nwosu Uchenna, who has eight sacks on the season. Uh, isn't, or, or at least he wasn't the full-time starter for the Seahawks up until recently. And Jermaine Illuminor eliminated him, right? Because uh, Nwosu Uchenna primarily lined up over Jermaine Illuminor, and he had he had literally had no impact. Did not touch the quarterback, did not hit the quarterback, had no sacks, had no forced fumbles. I want to jump right into some of his tape, because I think the guy did a lot of really good things. Check this play out. You got the 18-yard touchdown to Amir Abdullah. Jermaine Illuminor, and the O-line, generally speaking, does a pretty good job, but Jermaine Illuminor is in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the Seahawks' best pass rusher, right? That is Nwosu Uchenna, number 10 over here. If you guys remember, he was with the Chargers last year. He killed the Raiders. He killed Colton Miller specifically last year. I think he had like two sacks on Miller. Um, but Jermaine Illuminor does a great job here, right? He gets his hands on Uchenna. And just shuts him down. And Derek Carr has a lot of time on this play. Uh, first and foremost, I love the fact that he uses his hands. A lot of guys don't use hands anymore. We've talked about it with Colton Miller. He's more of a catcher. And that doesn't work in the NFL, in my opinion. On this play, Illuminor does a great job with his hands. And he just shuts this guy down. That's a really, really nice rep. And this play is a touchdown. And in order for this play to have been a touchdown, they got to get Derek Carr time. And the right tackle being in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the Seahawks' best defensive lineman. Keep in mind, this is third and five, a true pass set. Illuminor holds it down. But this is just one of many, many plays over the course of this game. All right, you guys, if you check this next play out, fourth quarter, two minutes left, 27 to 34. The Raiders got to score a touchdown. Great job using his hands and processing the stunt and keeping Derek Carr clean on this play. And Carr, of course, gets the ball to Josh Jacobs on this design throw. But this is a great job. Again, he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Nobosu Uchenna. And they're going to run the D-line game. But notice how he gets his hands on the defensive end. And he pushes the defensive end into the right guard. Comes back around and picks up the other guy. And once again, uses those hands, right? That's a great job right there by the right tackle. I think Jermaine Illuminor has done a really, really, really solid job in terms of pass pro. All right, you guys, check this next play out right here. You got a defensive line game. Jermaine Illuminor, as well as the right guard center, are all going to process and pick it up. And they're going to keep Derek Carr clean. And, of course, Carr gets the ball to Jacobs for a 13-yard gain on second and five. 
keep in mind big moments within the game right you got to score points you got to be able to get it done up front and the o-line really did get it done up front uh, first and foremost great job by aluminor realizing that the game is coming right he gets out of his stance and the second you see this guy's hesitating just a little bit he's not fully coming out of his stance he's not fully exploding and he realizes the guy's about to go downfield right come back around on this stunt he quickly shifts his helmet gets to number 97 punches 97 takes him on which allows bars and james to come back around James does a good job punching there. And look at Colton Miller here, man. I don't know if Bruce Irvin said something to Colton Miller, but Colton Miller was not having it with Bruce Irvin on this. But look at that. Bam, he threw his ass. Um, I don't know, man, if Bruce Irvin said something to, to Miller, but Miller had himself a great game as well. Watch the block right here by Illuminor and Alex Bars on Quinton Jefferson. The double team block, they're going to move him. Look at that. Look at that movement that they're creating for Josh Jacobs to pick up seven yards on this run right here. This is a really, really nice job down blocking on 77. And you see the run right to the outside of Illuminor, right through that gap. Illuminor pushes this guy four yards back. Now, I will say this. I don't think Illuminor is that good in run blocking. I think he's much better in pass pro than he is in run blocking. But... He definitely looked a lot better this game plus the biggest play of the game the 86 yard game winning touchdown uh here it comes right here if you watch illuminor watch him crush down the defensive lineman right there look at him turn his body if jermaine illuminor does not turn his body right there this play does not work that block right there allows this play to hit for a touchdown of course there's other moving parts within this play including josh the fullback foster moreau but Illuminor definitely looked better in this game in run blocking specifically. I think his biggest struggle has been run blocking specifically. Uh, but he looks better and I think he will continue to improve that over the course of his career. Now keep in mind, right, Jermaine Illuminor is 27 years old. Uh, so he's not super old. I think for the Raiders, the Raiders should lock him up for the next two seasons. Um, nothing that's going to put us in an absolute terrible spot. But finding good offensive linemen for cheap is hard right it's it's very hard um you pay a guy and i'll give you guys an example when the raiders paid gabe jackson like 12 13 14 million dollars even though his game regressed he was never going to take less money right so the only option the raiders ever had was to cut ties but i would have loved to cut keep gabe jackson if he said hey i'll take five million dollars right so the raiders kind of got lucky with colton miller because with colton miller he's getting you know he's not making 20 million dollars 22 million that a guy like trent williams and the other top five tackles in the league are getting so miller's getting 12 13 million and that may make sense for him right it's a good contract uh, but I think for someone like Illuminor, maybe you lock him in two years, $10 million. It's a good prove it type of contract. It doesn't hinder your team so much if over the next year you realize that Aaron Munford's the guy. Um, I think he's a good football player, and I think the Raiders need to consider locking him up. Uh, let's switch focus. Let's talk about the defense, specifically starting with the defensive line, specifically starting with the pass rush. Um, the Raiders were on fire, man. The defensive line killed it. Five total sacks. Think about that. The Raiders haven't had that type of production this entire season. And they took it to Geno Smith. You know, uh, the Seahawks scored 34 points, but this game did not look like, you know, that team did not look like a team that should have had 34 points. And truth be told, um, I think maybe five big plays, primarily because of the linebackers, and we'll talk about that in, in a second, was why the Seahawks scored more plus the two Derek Carr interceptions, right? They scored 10 points off of those interceptions. But the pass rush was on point, man. Um, Max Crosby, two sacks, four quarterback hits. Um, but his his biggest impact came on two plays late in the game, right? One was in the fourth quarter, the final drive the Seahawks had the ball. I think it was like third and 10. Max Crosby beats his guy and gets to the quarterback, takes the quarterback down. Keep in mind, the Seahawks started to drive, right? I think they're around like the 40-yard line. So they need like 15 more yards. Crosby gets a sack, forces the, the punt. We obviously run the clock out going to overtime. And although we don't score the first time, the Seahawks get the ball. Crosby makes another massive play. Two massive, impactful plays. The second one was third and five. He smokes the the, the right tackle, Abraham Lucas. Apparently, Lucas, uh, according to their head coach, was looking for a chip block from the running back. Never got it. He kind of let Crosby hit that outside release. Crosby gets the sack. 
third and five game-changing play. That was the pass rush, but it wasn't just Crosby. Chandler Jones had eight total pressures, right? Seven hurries and one quarterback hit. He was getting after it. Balil Nichols, Andrew Billings, Jerry Tillery. These guys are all getting after it. They're making major impacts in the pass rush. It was helping us on the back end, right? The safeties, the corners had much better games, in my opinion, than some of the past games. Although I don't think the, the secondary has been all that bad. I think it's really been the linebackers that have been an issue. And we're going to jump into that in just a second. And you guys will see those issues within the linebackers. But uh, Balil Nichols, man, two sacks. I'm sorry, uh, Andrew Billings, two sacks. Balil Nichols, one sack. That's insane. Three sacks from the interior defensive line. That's ridiculous. Um, some people are saying, you know, it's that Jerry Tillery effect. I disagree with that. I think these two guys just didn't have the consistent reps. I think Kendall Vickers was getting too many reps. I think uh, Jonathan Hankins was getting too many reps. Neil Farrell and Matthew Butler. And now Billings and Nichols are getting those those reps and it's showing on tape in pass rushing situations but even then a run defense andrew billings was a flat out superstar against the run just crushing it blowing plays up denzel perryman made a couple good plays against the run max crosby had three official pff run stops um the raiders were just getting after it and crushing people and it fired me up right um, but I want to talk a little bit about the Raiders linebackers because I think it's a massive issue for the Raiders. All right, you guys, jumping right into the Raiders linebackers in coverage specifically, you're going to see the Raiders right now are in a cover two defense. Uh, they're in some sort of Tampa two cover two. You're going to see Denzel Perryman start to drop back, start to run back with no offense, uh, which you can tell this is a cover two based off the way the corners on the outside are kind of dropping, but, and they're not carrying all the way back. But Perryman is taking 87, and for some reason, Perryman stops. He stops himself, and he starts to look backwards, and Smith throws the football, and this play right here picks up 24 yards. It's plays like these where the Raiders linebackers just aren't good enough. They're just not good in coverage. Plays like this is why the Raiders defense suffers and why the Raiders defense struggles. Check this next play out. The Raiders are in a cover three. If you guys watch linebacker Luke Masterson, watch where he runs here. And I don't know what he, the hell he is doing uh, because he's basically covering grass and not a defender. And that's a major issue in my opinion. Uh, when there's guys in a certain spot, you run to those guys, right? For example, like I understand his responsibility may be out here somewhere. May not make sense because you see the safety also getting out here. Maybe he overruns it a little bit. But it doesn't make sense for Masterson to run way out here when there's no one out there. Literally, think, think about just pre-snap, right? If, if you just look at kind of where guys are pre-snap, um, you see the running back, number nine, coming out of the motion, coming to the bottom of your screen. You see three receivers already lined up to the bottom of your screen and only one up here. For what reason would you run that way, right? So it doesn't make sense, in my opinion. Um, it's a cover three, you can tell, based off the shell, 26, 25, the corner here. The safety drops into the curl flats. Um, Max Rosby takes the other side, and then Masterson should theoretically have the middle. But he's so invested in covering grass and covering space and not an actual defender. You know, you got plays like this where there's guys wide open in the middle of, your, of the field. And this one hits for 21 yards, right? Massive issue within the Raiders linebacker check out this next play right here second and 23 the Raiders have the Seahawks in a terrible position and I want you guys to think about this think about this concept every zone play at some point turns into a mad play and this is exactly what we're referring to you see the running back here Homer it's going to come out of the backfield running a, a, a flat out, flat route and watch Jayden Brown and watch how Jayden Brown isn't able to process and stick with 25 and Smith hits this for 27 yards. 27 yards is a big, big play right there, right? And I want you guys to think about it. Second and 23, the game the, the game is tied right now 27 to 27. If the Raiders are able to get off the field, you're looking at potentially winning the football game or being in a much better position because they score a touchdown on this drive. And it's plays like this the Raiders linebackers aren't able to make. I know this is hard for any linebacker to do, but... You put a top tier linebacker there and they shut this play down. They're going to turn their hips. They're going to recognize what's happening and they're going to take away 25. Let the quarterback pick up the yards that the quarterback's going to pick up. 
I guarantee you the quarterback does not pick up 27 yards. Or I guarantee you the quarterback probably doesn't even get back to this uh to the initial line of scrimmage here. Uh keep in mind 23 yards is what they need for the first. And this picks up 27. Major issues in the linebackers. Check this next play out. The Raiders are, I believe, in a cover two. Um, they're gonna play action, get Geno Smith rolling out. Watch Jayen Brown try to under run underneath DK Metcalf. And he's just not able to do it. Um, understandably Metcalf super quick super explosive but at the end of the day you're a linebacker you have to be able to take this away uh, if you put Fred Warner here if you put Darius Leonard there they recognize this play quickly they recognize the receiver coming across and I know this is Jay and Brown and not one of these top tier wide receivers but you got to figure it out you got to be able to get a stop here at the very least you take this one option away you let the quarterback run with the football that's fine but our linebackers are really, really struggling. And it's all of them. Every single one of our linebackers. They're just not good in coverage. And our D-line was great this week. Our secondary has been really good, in my opinion, the entire season. We've limited a lot of big plays. But the linebackers have been a major issue. And people have blamed Patrick Graham. But how can you blame a defensive coordinator who just doesn't have good players? At the end of the day, the Raiders need to make those investments in the linebackers. Our first round pick this year should be used on a linebacker. Trade for the best, draft the best, get yourself a linebacker because a linebacker impacts both coverage and run defense. Having a top tier linebacker is a very, very, very important. It's what's going to separate the great defenses from the average defenses. Every great defense has a linebacker, a good linebacker in the middle, calling those plays, making those plays. Nothing against the linebackers we have. They're just not impactful in every aspect of the game. They just don't make the plays when we need them to be made, right? The Raiders got to fix those linebackers because it's become an issue. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is the first time you're on this channel, consider subscribing. Thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.